shed his blood. And it's those very things that need to be then sprinkled over our hearts. Yes. Yeah. The very blood of Christ. Amen. That's our only hope. That's our only way out yes. in our life. Amen. That's how we overcome failure in our life. Is relying upon the fact that Jesus overcame all yeah. of our failures. Yeah. That He took all of our failures, took them all together, and nailed them to the cross. Amen. He took everything that we've done in our life, the past, the future, Hallelujah. took them together and nailed them to the cross. Thank you, Lord. Brought judgment upon them. Brought redemption Hallelujah. for them. Jesus. So that He can purchase us with His own shed blood. Yeah. See, you were bought not with silver and gold, but by the yeah. precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, You're costly. Amen. Thank you, Amen. That's His love for you, and that's how much you cost Hallelujah. to Him. Thank you, God. Is a willingness to give up His life so that He can have your life. You. See, if we forget those things, then we just remain in our sin, and we remain in the patterns of our life. But the fact is, is we need to See the things in our life for what they are. Amen. See, God desires truth in the inward parts. Amen? Amen. We need to face our failures truthfully. We need to allow the cost of the failures in our life to change us. What are the costs of failures in our life? We see it's the shed blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. But also we know that we lose our sight, just like Samson. He lost his sight. They burned his eyes out. Yes. He lost his freedom. He lost his strength. And that's the, one of the most amazing thoughts that, that I find there in the Scriptures is the fact that whenever he lost his strength, whenever he gave him to Bathsheba, uh, not Bathsheba. Delilah. <clears throat> and he thought he could just rise up again. And it said that the that his strength had departed him. And he didn't know. And often that's the case whenever we go headlong into sin. Is that we don't realize really how bad we are. And you know the amazing thing is everybody else sees it but us. Yes. Right. Like we think we're you know, hiding it. <laughs> but God wants to restore us, amen? Hallelujah. Yeah. We need to realize the high cost of sin so that we don't repeat those things. And I've said this before, and it bears repeating, is that we see in the, the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, that God, whenever He <laughs> would convict them of sin and, and show them their sin by the commandments of God, it was then required that the shedding of blood was to take place in order for remission of sin. And so a lamb had to be sacrificed. The, that blood had to be shed. And see, a lot of us aren't uh, sheep herders. Any, got any sheep herders here? We may have shepherds here, but not necessarily sheep herders. In the real sense of animals. But sometimes we can't really relate to it, but Often whenever they would prepare a lamb, what they would do is they would raise this lamb without spot or blemish. They would, look, they would look for a lamb that was perfect and set aside that lamb. And sometimes, really the reality is a family can get attached to those things. And to bring it to reality, and I'm not trying to be cruel or, or gross in this sense, but... I think to bring it to the reality in our life, 
It would be as if we were raising a, a dog or a puppy and choosing the best of those and setting those things aside. And could you imagine every time you sinned, you would have to take that innocent thing and see it die because of the sins that you did in your life? Yes. That it, it dies instead of you die. Now tell me, don't you think that would keep you from wanting to do that as much? If you knew that was the case? Yeah. See, if, if we see in the Old Covenant that the, the blood of lambs and goats <coughs> had that kind of effect, should not the shed blood yeah. of the Son of God have a greater effect on our life? Where we behold the cross where we behold the fact that He took our sins and He was nailed to that cross, it should be enough to change us. And that's, that's really the question is, in our life, with things in our life, can we truly say that's enough in my life to see a change in my life? Because the fact is it needs to be because that's the only thing there is. That's the only hope we have is that the cross would change us. If we're trying to look for another means or, or another routine or 21 days to break a habit or 50 ways to change our life, that doesn't work. There's only one hope, and it's through the shed blood of Jesus. Amen. It's through realizing that the high cost of doing the things that we casually do in our life, there was a, a mother, I heard this, read this story, there was a mother one day who, who liked, looked out her kitchen window and saw her three kids surrounded by a bunch of baby skunks. How many would be horrified? Anybody ever been sprayed by a skunk? Um, I've been there. It's one, of, one of those smells that is so great, it just, it just stays with you. <laughs> and you'll never forget the smell. But a lot of us have have hit skunks or drove by roadkill on the road and, and smelled skunks. So we know what skunk smell smells like, right? It smells like B.O. That's a good way to describe it, is it not? Well, she, she saw her three children and kids out there surrounded by a bunch of little baby skunks. And so, what, what did this mother do? She, she threw open the window and stuck her head out and yelled, Run! <laughs> so, to her horror, they all picked up a, a skunk and ran. <laughs> So we know the rest of the story. They all got sprayed. They, they didn't want to see this little poor. You know, there was danger. Obviously, we got to protect these little skunks. <laughs> but just like that, sin often will leave a lasting mark upon us. Yes. Yes. That's why it needs to be avoided. And see, it's just like somebody who is fixing a car and, and they get all this stuff all over them and they think, well, you know, I've got some stuff in the house that'll wash this off. And you ever notice that when you, when you think, oh, no big deal, I can wash this off, that you, you guys will probably relate to this. It's like you, when, it's, when it's a couple of things and you think you can wash it off, you tend to get dirtier because, oh, you know, I can wash it off. Because you throw care of the wind until you discover what you have in the cabinet just doesn't seem to be getting it off. And the reality is, is in our life, whenever we, we play with sin, as much entertainment and movies, as much, many times as we want to go shopping, it doesn't cover up and it doesn't remove the guilt that's in our heart. There's nothing like the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. 